my friends we're live for another edition of the texas torch guys there's no skit there's no like you know i'm told what to say or i have bullet points on you know what i'm going to talk about i do have like topics like today for example we're going to talk about what attorney uh, eric dick asked us to discuss and also miss jackie struss asked us to discuss paralegals but we'll step a little bit uh, more further than that and talk about staff and employees not just paralegals um I'd like to thank Mr. Dick, Attorney Dick, for chiming in, and Ms. Jackie Struss, um, what an amazing, amazing individual who takes on a lot of pressure out of the 11th District Court in Harris County and has been with the court systems for a long time. So Ms. Struss is a very smart and powerful individual um, who is, I, I would like to say, in charge, if not the coordinator, right, <laughs> of an entire court, the 11th District. And like a paralegal, she has duties that are right there at the judge's duties as well. Because a paralegal or a coordinator has to be side by side with an attorney. And that's why the power of a paralegal. There's two types of paralegals, the plaintiff side and the defense side. On the defense side, paralegals sometimes get involved with the defense antics and tactics. And I guess they have to. They're employed by them. On the plaintiff side, you have all different types, aspects, and spectrums of paralegals who can come and work for you or assist you. At the Hadi Law Firm, we have many paralegals here. Our paralegals uh, have been with us for years. And most of them, if not all of them, started from the bottom. Now we're here. And what I mean by that is, for example, Ms. Regina, who is part of our team, who is head paralegal, lead paralegal here at the Hadi Law Firm, started as the receptionist and made her way all the way up to being the lead paralegal who's really the the, the, the main assistant to Miss Jamil Thomas, attorney Thomas, who's my boss, who I met day one at law school at Thurgood Marshall School of Law in 2006. And now her brother, Mr. Steve Thomas, who again, the best individual to have employed, right guys? Yes, yes, sir. Is someone yes, sir. who comes and experiences all aspects of what you're doing. And I always tell the litigation department and I tell the pre-lit department, there is no lit without pre-lit. There's nothing for paralegals or lawyers to do if the pre-lit department doesn't really create a strong foundation for us to fight on. So our paralegals, even our attorneys, Mr. Steve Thomas, attorney Thomas started from the bottom, started with how to set up a claim how to talk to a client and sign up a client, how to send requests for records. Then they kind of evolve through the process of becoming, I guess, a paralegal. And we push all of our staff, all of y'all guys, right, to excel and succeed? Yes, sir. yes, sir. And that's why we put so many individuals through law school. One, because of their own motivation, but because if you want to have, if you have a dream or a desire to succeed, then what's after being a paralegal, being a lawyer? And that's why the job of a paralegal is so valuable because they carry all the stress that attorneys really don't need to deal with, such as day-to-day -day calendaring, day-to-day -day task monitoring, file reviewing, document reviewing, discovery reviewing and drafting, discussing cases, deposition preparations. Attorneys are always involved in monitoring, but as an attorney, we can't always be there. So that's why we rely on a good paralegal or a good staff. Guys, are y'all paralegals? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, y'all are not, guys. Y'all are <laughs> y'all are pre litigation. We're gonna be, we're gonna be no, I mean, y'all are pre litigation killers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you have a desire to be a paralegal, we discussed that last week. You already have the knowledge and foundation of what it is that's done in pre lit to create that gift. It's like a gift you give to the hey guys in pre lit. We couldn't settle this case. Geico told us to go do what you gotta do. Here you go, a little, you know, like a Fabergé egg, just a beautiful egg. All they have to do is just, you know, mold it a little bit more and put it on the counter and kill it. Prepare the case and go to trial. And that's the hardest part, right? That's where a paralegal's job comes in and organizing the files and making sure documents are filed with the courts correctly. Following up with records, affidavits. We have a whole medical team because gathering medical records for a paralegal to review and finalize and create something such as a notice of filing of affidavits, which is required under the rules under 18001, 
which got modified in 2019. Now you have to follow your affidavits. There are some nuances, but you pretty much got to follow all the records for treatments that's already been received prior to following suit within 90 days. And there's nuances. You can agree to change, your, but the law changed, which is good. And the law changed again this year. They started following federal rules. It speeds up the process of litigation. It allows us now to not have to sit and wait three, four years. Insurance companies can't delay and deny and defend. And it helps us facilitate the cases and hopefully efficiently and effectively uh, with no delay. Now we have COVID that's creating a very strong delay, but we have many judges out there in Harris County and a lot of counties and all around the United States who are putting themselves on the line, trying to push cases to go forward knowing that COVID's there, knowing the risks associated with their court staff, with the people that have to set up and monitor these trials. And I think we started virtual jury trials, which is a blessing also. But until COVID completely disappears, everything's kind of at a little slow snail pace they'll make. Um, but even then, the paralegals uh, are a little overwhelmed because the litigation aspect of what we do kind of exploded and magnified because there's no trials. So lawyers are finding more time to be able to review cases and, and organize or better prepare them. And that's where the paralegal comes in. Paralegal's job isn't to go get you coffee or, you know, go book your flight. You know, you can do that as an attorney. You can go get your own coffee. It's, you know, it is what it is. The paralegal has to be focused and motivated because they're your right hand for the most part. You trust that paralegal to keep you on track. The one thing that us as attorneys have to monitor are deadlines. And deadlines change all the time. And we can always ask for an extension on deadlines, but you don't want to miss a deadline and then have to go and ask someone to help you with that deadline. Um, paralegals, you know, on the defense side, I don't think they should buy into the whole defense tactic of being aggressive or delaying or denying opportunities for depositions, but they have no choice. That's who they're getting the check from. On our side, we tell everyone to just be fair and reasonable and follow the process of the rule of law. And if you don't like what the other side says, let's discuss it. Follow your motions. Follow a motion to compel. But we're not going to give you the defendant's depot until you give us the plaintiff's depot. Let's talk about that aspect real quick. From the start of my career, the hardest thing for me to get, pre-lit or lit, is a statement from the individual, most cases the defendant, who brought harm to your client. You ruined this person's life and you won't let us talk to them? Nope. Ask them what they were doing? Nope. Where they were coming from? Nope. How much alcohol they had? No. Why they did this? No. Were they texting? No. Nothing? We can't ask them any questions? No. We want to talk to your plaintiff first which I don't understand other than like a, 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 a tactic to intimidate. I don't get why they want to talk to the plaintiffs first. Most of the time you get a recorded statement. If you snag it before we step in, you have the police report. We've sent you a demand with the medicals. Nothing changes. Well, the adjuster wants to, who cares? The who? The adjuster? I sued your insured defendant. You represent that insured. Who cares about this puppet master wannabe adjuster? They have no say when it comes to litigation. I had a lawyer from Liberty Mutual, and I won't name names. I know I've named names in this video, in the prior videos, but this one, I'll let him slide. But he asked my clients at a deposition, and there's a video on my YouTube page where State Farm tried that. Y'all saw what happened, right? He asked my clients a month ago in a deposition, do you understand that we've made this offer to settle this case? And my client said, I'm not sure. Because our clients were advised to never discuss any aspect of resolution or settlement that they have with me or any other individual in my office. That question got them off the case. They hired another law firm in Dallas. Now Liberty Mutual, who tried to come and do my job, Wear my shoes. Guys, depositions is not a, a venue play, to all the plaintiff lawyers out there. If a defense counsel during a deposition says, do you understand we try to make an offer, objection form, don't answer that, stop. What are you talking about here? Well, I just want to know if your client knows we're trying to settle. Well, you, I represent. You, can, you want to talk settlement, talk to me. But you can't talk settlement in a deposition. 
because you can't talk settlement in court. Who's we? State Farm? You saw it in the video, right? She quickly, no, say, say, you understand state, do you understand Geico is trying to, do you understand Liberty Mutual? So when we go to trial, you just open the door. The one rule that y'all fight, don't let the jury know there's insurance behind this poor little defendant. And you open the door by asking my clients how much they want. So it gets to a point to where you can't litigate anymore. You can't defend your position. Our paralegals are blasting you. And you think it's a good thing to come and ask my client how much do they want? Well, please, why? Why? Because if they tell you how much, you're going to write that check for them? <laughs> Shucks, man. You know, my shoes aren't too big, probably like size 10 and a half. You know, if you want to, please come wear them. It's not the size of the shoes or whether or not it fits. It's whether or not you can tolerate the pressure that comes with wearing those shoes. And that lawyer got in trouble. I should have sued him for torturous interference, but I let Liberty Mutual slide on that one. I've sued other lawyers for that. You see the video on YouTube. Good paralegals protect you from those situations because they prepare the clients. They remind the clients, remember, this deposition is about liability and damages. And when I say damages, not settlement numbers or what you want for settlement purposes, but damages. What harm was caused to the plaintiff? Um, let's keep going. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, paralegals. Our staff here understand that we always go first in depositions because we have the burden. If a defense lawyer, remember, the defendants, the defense lawyers, they can probably, they can never find that. Sometimes they have control over the defendant. Most of the time, these lawyers that pound their chest and I want to go first, Hottie. There's no rule that says I can't go. What, what are you doing, man? Are you hiding? You don't, you haven't talked to your defendant, have you? You haven't said anything to this person for a long time, have you? Yeah. I know who my client is. We talk to him all the time. And I hope the judges realize that eventually not only do the plaintiffs have the burden. Oh, here, pro tip. Here's a pro tip. January of 2019, we started adding requests for depositions in our petitions. Every single one of them, either for an individual defendant or a corp rep, if the situation involves a corp rep type situation, a corporate representative. You think people like that? <laughs> no, they hated it. And they start filing motions for this or that or that. There's no rule. Hottie thinks there's some magical rule that says he goes first. Okay, well, well, guys, at trial, don't the plaintiffs go first? Yes, yes, they do. Okay. Don't we go last also? Yes, yes, we do. Don't we have the burden of proof? Yes, yes, you do. Then you don't need a rule that says we get to take the <laughs> – and it's not really about going first. Come look at my system. I'll show you 50 different cases at a minimum, hundreds, where we've given up the plaintiff's depot and then we've chased the defendants for months and months and months and months and months and months and months, and months and because they don't know where this person is. Or the person already changed the insurance policy. They're not even with Geico or Progressive anymore and they don't care at all to cooperate. And that's a whole different story, a whole different problem. But don't come and try to posture and delay litigation because you want to take the plaintiff's deposition first. Our paralegals don't tolerate that. If you think you won up them, you didn't. It's called a red herring. Sometimes these defense lawyers need to just take a step back and see what's really happening. You're fighting over here, right? Ah, we're getting them. Um, what's really happening behind the scenes? Ah. Focus, guys. Focus. Paralegals. Don't disrespect paralegals. Sometimes these defense lawyers just lose their mind and start emailing our paralegals just some wild stuff. Very rude, very disrespectful. Don't disrespect the paralegal because when you disrespect the paralegal, it's like you disrespected the lawyer. The paralegal is doing nothing but what they're told to do or what they know to do. They have tasks just like all of us. But if you think you're going to go and scream and yell at a paralegal to get them to change their mind, you're only going to go and irritate lawyers on both sides. Don't disrespect defense paralegals unless, look, look, sometimes you got to just be a little stern to individuals, right? Like these paralegals that think they're one-upping you. 
oh, we got them. We got them. And then they get got. And all of a sudden, the paralegal disappears and the lawyer comes in. Well, I'm sorry. I got a message the other day. I'm a new paralegal on this file. And I just got a chance to look at this case with farmers, Meredith Ellender, James Sersonsky. Twice now, they've tried to push this case to mediation. And this time yesterday, they threw their paralegal. I'm the new paralegal. I want to see what we can what? So the defense lawyer ignored my attempts to settle. The adjuster, Meredith Ellender, with Farmers, who I've known for probably 11 years, ignored my attempts to resolve. And twice now, the first time, they weaseled around us, went straight to the mediator. The second time yesterday, again, weaseled around us. So in two months, you have twice tried to resolve. You haven't made one offer based on any demands ever presented, and you haven't made one call to our office to facilitate, facilitate and organize the mediation. That paralegal knows what she's doing. They sent her in to go and go, go see what she can do. Go trick the hottie and the hottie. Let's get them at the table. And I don't understand that, guys. If you force someone to do something, are they going to do it? Yeah. No. No, no sir. No, sir. No. What if you drag the person to the room and say, you're going to do it? They're gonna, you ain't going to like the situation. You're going to force me to come to mediation where you've made no offers from day one. What do you think is going to happen at mediation? Oh, I'm going to, let's throw flowers. Ha <laughs> ha. Make an offer and resolve. The worst thing someone can do is compel mediation or force mediation. You've had years to settle, years to settle. But that's what always happens. Your Honor, Attorney Hottie is being very unreasonable. Your Honor, the Hadi law firm won't negotiate or try to resolve cases. Of course we do. That's all I ever tried to do was resolve cases. And y'all said, go do what you got to do. I don't file suit to come sit at mediation. No way. No way. Because you go sit there again, it's the same thing. Remember that traditional negotiation? They eventually stop. And when they stop, okay, I guess you reach the end of your piggy bank. That's all we got, guys. Take it or leave it. Okay. Well, record shows we leave it every single time, every single time. Take farmer's insurance, for example. Got different insurance companies have different risk levels. Allstate, they don't care. They go to trial. But even Allstate, even Allstate now cares and pays us now because they're tired of losing to us. They pay other law firms as well, not just us, because other law firms fight them, right? Like Johnson Garcia, my friend Will Mejia. Popped them on November 11th out of Montgomery County for $111,000. All states tired. So the most risk, the, the most risk-taking insurance company, all state is getting tired. How about everyone else under them? State Farm. Let's talk about State Farm real quick. Shane Osborne with Martin Desir cheated in Galveston County, and then the 14th Court of Appeals on December 10th admonished him for cheating. Wow. State Farm had to pay that forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars to protect his cheating and then lose. They should have just settled. They took every case away. All state took cases away. You know what I've realized through the times, guys? When a lawyer calls and says, Well, that was that was progressive. It wasn't me. That was the other law firm. It wasn't me. That was the other lawyer. It wasn't, wow, how many times are y'all changing? At the end of the day, it's all you. But you got to fight a case to where the insurance company and the defense lawyer just hate each other now. And they fire the defense lawyer. Because the defense lawyer has never fired the insurance company. It's no way. We have many cases where they go from one defense lawyer firm to another defense firm to another defense firm. Embarrassing. And it costs thousands of dollars. And that's how you have to litigate. You have to create that division between the defense firm and the insurance company because by law, <laughs> the insurance company doesn't represent on these tort fees or third-party cases. They don't represent the insurance. The defense firm doesn't represent the insurance company. They represent the person who purchased the insurance policy. They get that mixed up all the time. And eventually, before you know it, we go to mediation, negotiating on other issues other than the facts of the case. 
When I try to settle pre-suit based on the facts and merits of the case, no one ever cares. When you follow suit all of a sudden, hey, hottie, well, what? Nothing changed? The accident was three years ago. What changed? Hey, hottie, we just kind of want to settle this case. Oh, well, God bless. That's all I ever wanted to do. And the best part about all this, my friends, I told every single insurance, go look up my bar number. Over 1,100 lawsuits filed. Over 1,000 in the first 10 years. I told every single adjuster and lawyer, you're only going to teach me. And they did. I hate to say they taught me, but they put their neck on the line and let me, you know, slit it, <laughs> pull the rope on the guillotine because they said, Hadi, go do what you got to do. And now what do they say, guys? Hadi, stop doing what you got to do, right? Yes, sir. yes, sir. All day. Guys, it's a little early. We have our coffee going, but coffee going, but, you know, my staff's a little sleepy. So um, one thing we do here at the Hadi Law Firm is take breaks, on the clock breaks. Once or twice a day, five, ten minutes, maybe stretch a little bit. Maybe, you know, just pop your neck, relax, recover. So any questions, guys, let us know. I might not do this every day, but I'm definitely going to try to, you know, turn on this video. Look, we got a little camera here too, guys. Look, see, a light. Sorry, I got a light that's shining on my – is it bright? Yeah, shine bright like a diamond. Treat your paralegals with, with respect. Treat paralegals on the other side with respect. Treat all staff with respect because at the end of the day, paralegals may have been underlying staff members and pre-lit that became a paralegal and worked their up. And paralegals become lawyers. Many paralegals become lawyers eventually. So any questions, info at thehottylawfirm.com. We're always here to uh, entertain. Oh, by the way, guys, we set a record yesterday. Four cases settled with Geico. What a blessing. We set a record last year. If you go to don'ttrustthegecko.com, you'll see we're the only law firm in the world to sanction Geico through the Texas Department of Insurance for $5.2 million because of our efforts in helping them. And they had to change their entire worldwide. They're only in the United States. I can say worldwide. But they had to change their entire claims handling practice. How Geico evaluates claims changed because of the Heidi Law Firm and the power and strength of the staff. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Any sir. questions, call, email us anytime. We're always here to have fun with y'all. Happy Wednesday.